Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at how you can use Python to connect to a database. So Python allows you to connect databases and run commands on the database. You can query and connect and list, insert values, delete them, update values. In this particular lesson we'll look at how to connect to a specific kind of database called the MySQL database. And we'll look at how to get a list of values stored in the database on a particular table. So in terms of databases in general, a database is just a collection of database data that's structured to allow easy access. An example of a database are MySQL, Postgres SQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. Um, so there are types of databases. You see databases everywhere. Amazon.com is a database of books. Um, CD Now is a database of CDs, etc., etc. So the International Movie Database is a database of movies. Anything that's got a list of records in it is a database. We need databases because if we didn't, it would be hard to find data. Let's imagine we stored information about students, not in a database, but in a text file. So a notepad file it might look something like this. Let's say we have, for each student, we said Jane Smith is the first student, or student number is that, she joined DIT on such a date, John Smith is the second student, his student number is that, he joined DIT on a different date, Joel Smith is the third student, her student number is that, and she joined DIT on such a date, and then Joel Smith is a, another student and his number is not sure yet and he joined DIT on that date. Okay, so if it was a no, notepad file that would present some problems. If we were looking for the name Joel Smith, for example, we'd have to check one word at a time, probably one letter at a time. First letter was J, the next was O, and the next was E, the next was space, and the next was S M I T H. We'd know we'd got there. So if we were doing that in a text pad file, we'd start at the first letter or word, go across the first line, then start at the next line, go across that, start at the third line, go across to the end of that, start at the fourth line, go across to the end of that, and go to the fifth line, and we'd find Joe Smith eventually. We'd call this a serial search or a sequential search, because we have to search each element as we're going along. We have to search the whole of the text to see if we can find the name Joel Smith. So that's considered very inefficient and slow. Another problem with storing data in a, in a notepad file is that there's a lack of consistency with the way we express the same kinds of information. So, for example, how we express the date varies from 19 to 013 to 10th of September, to 192014, and then 1st of Sept 2004. So there seems to be a few different ways of expressing dates. And just for the sake of consistency, if we were searching for a particular date, let's say we were searching for everybody who start enrolled in September, we'd have to look for 09, we'd have to look for September, the full word, we'd have to look for Sept, full stop, and maybe even sept with don't fall stop, so that's very awkward. Also, in some of the sentences it says, uh, the first one, Jane Smith, first student and her student number, next one, second student and his student number, third one and her student number, but the fourth one just says his number. So whoever was typing in the fourth one forgot to put in the word student. If I was looking for the phrase student number, I wouldn't find them all saying student number. Also, we note, we noted already that we're not sure of the last person's student number yet. And sometimes people might leave that blank. Sometimes people might put in, we'll fill this in later. Uh, sometimes people might put in, not sure. So again, it's difficult to be consistent. And finally, we'll note that Jane Smith is the first student. John is the second. Joe is the third. But then I have in Joe Smith is another student. So again, it's inconsistent in how we categorize the students. We've one, two, three, and then another student. What we really need is a table. We put this information in a table as follows. 
Family name, Smith, given name, Jane, John, Joe and Joe. Gender, female, male, female, male. Order number, that's first student, second student, third student, and then fourth student instead of another student. Student numbers are as before with the one we don't know. We'll call it null for the moment, which means blank, as we know. And then the date joined in a consistent format. So putting the, these student records in a table allows for a great deal of more consistency. The same information is there as we have in the notepad file, which is structured more easily. And we reduce the problems with consistency because, let's say, with the order, we've one, two, three, four, instead of first, second, third, and another student. The date problem is also fixed because when I create a database, if I have a field that's called date, it'll only accept information in one particular way. And in this case, it only accepts it in day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. So it won't accept it as 1ST of September 2005. It'll only accept it as 01 slash 09 slash 2014. So that, that forces the person who's inputting the information to be consistent in the way they input it. Which is nice, so everything looks the same. And then if I'm doing a search, it's much easier to search for information. As well as that, if I'm searching for the name Joe Smith, we saw in the last search, we had to serially search every value in the text file. If I search for Joe Smith, it's only in the names. And I check Jane, John, Joe, and then Joe, and then I found it. So four searches, four word search instead of the four sentences search. So that reduces our search time significantly. We'll also know one more thing. The table has a name. It's called student records. So we go back. Student records is the name, as you can see up there. And it's important that every table has a name because in a database, you can have multiple tables in the database. So I could have student records. I could have staff records, I could have um, exam timetable, I could have course course table, lots of different things like that. So having a name on each table allows us to differentiate them. The next thing I want to talk about is, is SQL, which is a special kind of programming language that allows you to create databases and insert values into them and update values in them. So databases have a special programming language. The most common one is SQL, usually pronounced SQL. And there's a lot of different versions of SQL, depending on the specific database you're using. But in general, the code looks quite the same. So as well as Python, in this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit about SQL, which is the language for creating databases. The reason we need to know about SQL is because if we want to connect from Python to a database, we need to know how to give commands to the database through Python. So we'll just look at a bit of SQL. So let's think about our table again. Family name, given name, gender, order number, student number, and date joined. If I want to get a list of all the student numbers in that table, I would use the following SQL statement. If I say select student number, that'll give us all the student numbers from student records. Student records is the name of the table. Select the field student number and print out all the values of student number. Our general format is select fields or field in this case from table or tables. So in this case, we've just said, give me all the student numbers in the table student records. If I just wanted to find the first two students who joined the course, though, so what I could say is, Select like student number from student records where the order number, the order in which they joined, is less than three. So that's numbers one and two. And the general way that a select statement with a condition works is select a particular field or a number of fields separated by a comma from a table or a number of tables separated by a comma where some condition is true. So in this case, we'll only print out the first two student numbers based on the fact that numbers 3 and 4, their order number, is equal to or less than what we're looking for. 
So if we want to set up a database, how do we do it? Well, before we look at the code to connect the database, we need to have the Python, a database set up for the Python to connect to. So we need to install MySQL in this case, which is a type of database, and then create within the installation a database and within the database a table. So to download MySQL, you have to visit the following page, dev.mysql.com slash downloads MySQL. To download it, you have to create a login and, and just, uh, get an email. There's a bit of a rigmarole to do it, but once you get it done, you get it installed. You're flying. Once you've created the table, the, the MySQL instance, it, it automatically logs you into the database as a user called root, R-O-T. It will ask you for a password for root, so just call password. But if you want to create a new user, let's say you want to create a new user called new user, you can type in SQL code, create user, and whatever name you want, new user in this case. Once you've got the MySQL database management system, DBMS, working, you want to create a, a database particularly for, for this course, and you use the SQL command create database and whatever name you like. I've called it sample DB here. And the next thing you need to do is tell the database system that you're using that particular database. So you need to say use sample DB. So then if I want to create a table of student records like we had before, here's how I specify it. The command is create table, table name, in this case is student records. And then my fields are order number, and I've said it's an integer that can have three values in it. So it's, it, it goes up to 999 is the maximum value. Family name is character type and the maximum character size is 20 letters. Given name is character type, 20 letters. Gender is M or F, so it's character of one letter long. Student number, it's character type because it starts with a D of eight letters long, and then the, the date the students join the course is of type date, and our default date type will take care of the, the date. So we do create table, student records, open bracket, specify each of the fields within the table, and then close bracket, semicolon. If I want to insert values into that newly created table, then I say insert into student records, insert into the table values, order number, comma, it's order number, put in one, for family name, put in Smith. For given name, put in Joan. For gender, put in F for female. For student number, put in that. And for date, put in... It goes in as this format, year, month, and then uh, day, but with no separations between them. And if I want to search another record, I do that. So as long as I have the correct order of the fields, it works perfectly. I don't actually need to name the fields. It puts them in as you'd expect. So then if I want to list all the values in a table, I can just say select everything. That's field name, all fields. So select star from student records, and that will print out all the values of all the fields in the table student records. Now let's look at the Python code. So the Python code is fairly straightforward. We import a library called mysql.connector, and then we say mysql dot connector dot connect host localhost which means on on my current computer open the database sample db with the username root and the password is password because we set it as that and that's our connection cnx so we've opened a connection to a database running on our local computer the specific database is sample db logging in as root and password and then what I want to do is just run a command. Don't worry about the cursor stuff. Just execute select star from student records and then close that, which means run the program to select, print out all the fields within the student records table. So what I'll get is in, in this instance, I got, um, a list of all of, all of the roles and all of the values stored in each of the roles as well. So thanks very much for paying attention. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, over to you now.